Let me refresh your geography memory. In school, you probably learned that there are seven continents on Earth. But below the ocean's surface, New Zealand is really harboring a piece of the secret eighth continent, which is twice as ancient as previously assumed. That sounds ominous, I know. So, there is a long lost continent in the middle of the South Pacific that was only recently found. Around 80 million years ago, the now submerged continent of Zealandia split off from the supercontinent Gondwanaland. This huge continent has been mostly buried for the last 23 million years. That's a pretty long time. How big is it? A total of 1.9 million square miles, or a little less than half the size of Australia. 300 million years ago, there were tougher times than today's inflation. You know, with the no medicine, no technology of it all. And the breakup of Pangaea may have been one of the worst mass extinctions in Earth's history. The end of the Permian period was marked by one of the worst, if not the worst, mass extinction catastrophes in Earth history. Different estimates say that between 70% and 90% of all life on Earth was killed off. Don't you wonder what was killed off? Maybe a race we never knew existed. The Great Dying marked the transition between the Permian and Triassic epochs. Before the extinction catastrophe, large reptiles and synapsids, which were reptiles that looked like mammals and were our ancestors, ruled both land and sea life. Scientists in the field of geology and paleontology have just a limited grasp on what may have caused this, and that's not a comforting thought. Recent reports say that the volcanic activity released a huge amount of greenhouse gases, which significantly warmed the planet and made the seas more acidic. Whatever the case, it irrevocably altered the course of human history. Scientists spent 375 years looking in the wrong place before they finally stumbled onto the eighth continent. There are, however, still many unanswered questions regarding the continent. In 1642, Abel Tasman set off on an expedition. What was the maritime travel like in the early 1600s? Sea travel throughout the 1600s was lengthy and, to put it simply, horrible. With the pilgrims left on the Mayflower in 1620, conditions on board were tight, and seasickness was the talk of the trip since the trip took place during the Atlantic hurricane season. Passengers shared the area with cattle and other items. The seasoned Dutch sailor was convinced of the existence of a massive continent in the southern hemisphere and set out to discover it. He boasted a colorful mustache, a bushy goatee, and a preference for hard justice. Subsequently, he attempted to hang his crew members on a drunken whim. So if the sea didn't kill you, a drunken captain would. Though this part of the world was still entirely unknown to Europeans at the time, they anticipated the existence of a substantial landmass there and gave it the name Terra. They must have spent the entire night debating on what to name the land before settling on Terra. How creative. On August 14th, he set out from his company's headquarters in Jakarta, Indonesia, with two tiny ships sailing west, then south, then east, and finally arriving on the South Island of New Zealand. On day two, six native Maori, believed to have occupied the area hundreds of years before, went out on a canoe and smashed a small boat that was transporting messages between the Dutch ships, giving him a bad first impression of the area and its inhabitants. Despite the fact that these were their lands to begin with, and despite the big mistake of messing with a thirsty warrior who knows how to do the haka, death claimed the lives of four Europeans. Later, the Europeans used a cannon to attack 11 more canoes, but it's not known what's happened to those boats. Tasman named the bad place Murderer's Bay, without realizing how ironic it was. A few weeks later, he sailed back to Europe and never set foot on this new continent again. Although he was confident in his discovery of the enormous southern continent, he soon realized that it was far from the commercial nirvana that he had hoped for. As far as we know, he did not come back. At the time, Australia had already been discovered, but to the Europeans, it didn't seem like the mythical continent they'd been promised. They renamed it after the planet Terra Australis when they changed their minds. A few million years before these Europeans came to this area, this underwater landscape also helped dinosaurs and their offspring take over the world. The enormous volcanism likely had a role in fracturing Pangaea as well. Large flood basalts dating back to that time period have been discovered in the region we now call Siberia. These effusions released massive volumes of carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere. A large collision of asteroids or the presence of a nearby supernova could also be to blame. 
It's also possible that a number of things were involved. It was such a massive disaster that 90% of anything living on Earth was wiped out. As a result of the drastic climate shift, it seemed like there was no place on Earth where our ancestors could feel secure. Even the strangest creatures were wiped out. The powerful sea scorpion and the trilobite were two of the numerous extinct groups that will never be seen again. Over the years, scientists have mapped these regions with great precision using a variety of methods including sonar. Through careful research and comparison, these religions' histories may be reconstructed with high accuracy. For instance, it seems like a natural match that the Atlantic coast of Africa and the eastern seaboard of the Americas were close to each other. If you compress Mexico and stack North and South America on top of each other, Morocco to about Gabon would fit snugly against the west and south coast of the United States. It will also be easy to join these continents of South America and Africa, along with their respective eastern and western coasts. This didn't happen by chance. The Atlantic Ocean was made because these three continents broke apart. The breakup happened around 140 million years ago, but it shows that the three continents were formally together. And after so many millions of years, new information shows that the landmass would have been called a continent if the ocean hadn't covered it. A terrific interactive platform to explore and analyze multiple layers of information and pictures over Zealandia was just provided by a New Zealand research organization called GNS Science. Zealandia is mostly submerged. New Zealand and a handful of other Pacific islands are the only continent-sized landmasses that are visible above water. GNS Science's recent map releases make it possible to add or remove topography, bathymetry, magnetics, seismic surveys, and more from a base map of terrain or Kugel Earth. Some scientists believe that the whole landmass sank into the Pacific Ocean around 23 million years ago, and that 93% of it is still there now, about twice as massive as the next biggest microcontinent, and about as big as half of Australia's landmass combined. It is the largest microcontinent in the world today that knows how to scuba dive. If all of Australia were dry land, New Zealand would be about half as big as Australia. Zealandia, the eighth continent, lies submerged under New Zealand and the Pacific Ocean. Knowing how old New Zealand is and making an accurate map of it are both challenges because 94% of it is underwater, and nobody on the team wants to get wet. Scientists now know that Zealandia is 1 billion years old, which is almost twice as old as they thought before. 2 million square miles in size, or nearly half the area of Australia, lie around 3,500 feet below the surface of the South Pacific. Scientists have yet to agree on whether or not the submerged landmass, known as Zealandia, should be classified as a continent. In 2017, a group of geologists deemed it to be. However, not all scientists agree. It can't be compared to a mountain, a nation, or a planet. No governing organization exists to recognize a content officially, so if anybody's looking for free land and has an extra bucket, be my guest. Mortimer's group theorized that a continent must have clear borders, a landmass larger than 386,000 square miles, an elevation higher than that of the surrounding ocean crust, and a continental crust thicker than the oceanic crust. This is despite the fact that there is no agreement on what a continent is, so it takes a lot of paperwork to be a continent. If the seas were drained, Zealandia would be visible as a distinct plateau above the sea bottom. This must be the thinnest, most submerged, and tiniest continent. While the crust of all other continents was 1 billion years old or older, the oldest crust and rock ever tested from Zealandia was only 500 million years old. However, new research suggests that the submerged continent is twice as ancient as originally assumed. This new study fills the last continental box. At this point, there can no longer be any dispute that we do, in fact, reside on top of a continent. Zealandia consists of New Zealand and a group of underwater fragments of crust that splits off from the ancient supercontinent Gondwana some 85 million years ago. Zealandia submerged over 94% of its original area between 30 and 50 million years after it separated from Gondwana. In the latest study, geologists examined 169 samples of granite from the Zealandia formation, which can be found under the South and Stewart Islands in New Zealand. Crystallization of magma occurs at great depths beneath the Earth's crust, creating granite. The scientists determined the age of the crystals and the crust in which they developed by extracting tiny crystals from the granite. The studies proved that the crust belonged to another supercontinent called Rodinia, which originated 900 million years ago. 
So that is to say, the earliest evidence of life on Zealandia may be found in its geological past, which dates back over 500 million years ago. Scientists produced a 4D map of the western shore of Zealandia in order to better understand the shape and evolution of its border. The map, part of an international effort to survey the world's ocean floor by 2030, also revealed the size and coastlines of Zealandia with unprecedented accuracy. In addition, they drew a tectonic map that shows exactly where the oceanic and continental crusts of the underwater continent are located. Further proof that Zealandia should be recognized as the 8th continent comes in the form of these new, precise maps, as well as the finding that areas of Zealandia are older than geologists believed. They want Zealandia to be as well known a name as Antarctica, so they're working to have it included in standard world maps and taught in classrooms. Is another continent missing from humanity's classroom? Tell us in the comments, like the video, and subscribe to get more like it.